Hey everybody, John here and welcome to my series, How to Use Citrus. This is going to be video 8 and this is going to be the video where we dive into the harmonic editor in Citrus and kind of get a little bit of custom with additive synthesis within the synth. So let's open up Citrus, let's select the default and then go to the default patch or the default preset. And then let's go to the first operator tab and then all the way here at the right where it says OSC, let's click this. So if this looks crazy or weird or doesn't make sense, just stick with this, I promise you, because this is probably one of the coolest features in Citrus alone because it allows you to design any type of waveform that you can think about. So all these bars here at the top, there's gonna be a total of 128, and the top row are gonna be your harmonics to your sound or to your sine wave or whatever wave you're working with, and at the bottom is gonna be the phase of that, uh, of that harmonic. So the volume here at the top of the harmonics and then the phase here at the bottom. And you'll notice that these bars, there's a dark one, a light one, a dark one, three lights, a dark, more lights, and then a dark. So these dark ones are going to be the different octaves. And we can see it at the top left here. It'll show you up here. So this is the third octave. This is the fourth. This is the fifth. And the harmonics in between. So right now, this is just a sine wave. And it's literally just one fundamental tone, just one harmonic, the fundamental, and that's essentially, that's only what a sine wave is. So if we select here, and then let's say we want to look at a triangle wave. Now it still has this first bar because we have to convert this and send it into this editor. So let's right click and then convert shape to sine harmonics. Now we can see what a triangle wave looks like as harmonics. So we can see that it's every other harmonic and it's lowering the volume and changing the phase as well of those harmonics which make this type of waveform. So let's get a little more complex. Let's go to a saw and then let's convert that. So this is going to be all the harmonics and they kind of cascade downwards all the way up here to the uh, all the way here to the bottom or to the end of this graph. And that's what makes up a saw wave because each one of these little bars is actually in an individual sine wave just at a higher pitch and adding all those together will eventually create the saw wave what we see here. So all those individual harmonics here are also represented vertically up here in this spectrum view. So for an example if I send this to a filter, let's mute this output for now, let's turn the output up, we can see it's shaved off there and as we change the cutoff they start coming back. So by changing this knob, what we're essentially doing is cutting off these at, its, at a predefined filter. So at this one, it was the first one, so a 12 dB uh, cutoff filter of a low-pass filter. So let's turn this off here, this filter, and then re-initiate uh, our output here. So let's go into a square wave, and then let's convert that shape. So this one basically looks very similar to a saw wave, except every other one is going to be highlighted or gone so it's basically every other harmonic and it looks like here they're all going to be at the same phase so let's go back to our sine wave so we have this open here and one of the one of the a cool thing to think about is one of the oldest types of analog synths is technically in organ because what they do is they add different harmonics into that sound so by knowing that, we can key some of that in. So we have our first fundamental here. Let's go to our next octave. Let's put another bar here. Let's go to the next octave, put it a little bit lower, and then a little bit lower, and then a little bit lower. So just by doing that, we have a basis, uh, of just a basic waveform of an organ. And then we can start adding effects later. My, my general rule of thumb is to try to get the first initial waveform to sound as good as possible because then the effects and the filters on top of that is just going to make it even better and it's kind of going to be the icing on the cake. Because if you start with a really bad sounding waveform, the effects might help it, but it's not really going to make it that much better. So knowing that, if you have an initial good waveform and then you add the effects later, it's just going to make your patch, it's going to take your patch to the next level. So, a couple controls here before we get too into this section. So, left clicking on the any bar and holding down and dragging are going to change the value. 
and same with a phase as well. However, if you right click and hold, this allows you to lock the first one you selected and kind of cascade it up or down. And that also works to the phase at the bottom as well. So let's go to assign and then let's convert that again just to be safe. So we're now here, we're back at the default. So left clicking to draw stuff and then left clicking all the way down to remove it if you'd like to, or you can alt click it and then remove the whole bar as well if you don't want to drag this all the way down like that. So if you have a couple bars, you hold down alt and then you just wipe them out. So something to think about. So let's say you have a couple cool harmonics like these. You have this waveform and you like these harmonics that you've selected, but you kind of want to mess around adding some other ones, but you don't want to mess up with these. So we can lock these harmonics by holding control and then we click these and we can notice that this little green thing here behind them activates. So if we click on them and click and drag, we can move all we want, but those initial ones are still going to stay the same. So we can have this waveform and kind of mess around until we find something we like. So let's delete all those and then control click and unlock these as well. And let's hold alt and remove those as well. So let's go into a couple of waveform stuff. So what I've, what I would really suggest is when you open up some presets that you like, go to some of the waveforms and right click it and convert it to shape sign harmonics and then kind of look at what harmonics are being used and the phase relationship of those harmonics. And by doing that, you can kind of get to an understanding of how certain sounds are made. So as an example for a standard bell type of sound, a lot of it has to do with the harmonics that you choose and then the envelope, or the volume envelope that you add. So if we have our first fundamental tone, let's go up maybe to th this third octave. Let's select a little bit lower volume there. Go to the next octave and then skip one and then drag it a little bit lower. And then we have a bell. And to make it sound more like a bell, let's go to our volume envelope, turn the volume envelope on, drag this point all the way to the left, drop this uh, sustain down all the way. And now we have a typical bell sound. And you can mess around this with taste. So how long it rings out for. But you generally don't really want that much of a release. You can put it, but I kind of like having a, just a kind of like a pluck type of sound. And then I'll add some effects as far as like a, uh, a little bit of reverb on here. And then delay is gonna really, sp gonna really spice that up. And then for the holidays, boom, you just made a bell. So let's bring this back to default here, and then let's go back into our oscillator tab. So a lot of the times people would like to make bass patches, and those actually aren't that difficult to make. Sometimes you can just leave one fundamental tone and then drop this down, and then kind of contour it obviously with your volume envelope. So generally a bass guitar will have a decently sharp attack, it will decay, and then you can ch change the release to taste. But sometimes you don't have enough harmonics really to make it stick out. So sometimes you can kind of add a couple here. And then add that as well. So really it's not that difficult. And I can maybe play around with the phase just a little bit and kind of go a little bit nuts with it. So it sounds pretty close to a bass. And sometimes you can also use a little bit of FM to kind of bring out that timbre just a little bit. So that's just a kind of a standard starting point for a bass guitar. So let's remove all these here. Let's hold Alt and then remove those. Also reset the phase. I think this is still locked, so I'll control and click that so it's editable now. So a couple other things to, to talk about. You can, you can bring in here, you can essentially analyze a single cycle waveform. So if you have external waveforms, you can do that and you can click this drop down here and you can analyze a single cycle waveform. 
So if you want to bring in something inside the Citrus that you already made or somebody else made, you can bring that in here and then further edit it or do whatever you want with that as well. So really cool. So another option here, let's draft some harmonics here. So we have this sound here. Now if we click this here, we can transpose this one octave up. And Citrus will do the math for you and bring all those, uh, those harmonics up one octave so you can kind of see how that sounds. And then furthermore, you have shift left and right, which is just going to shift those harmonics left. So that's going to bring it back to kind of where it started and then shift right or shift right again. So now we have that as well. Let's go back left twice. Whoops. There we go. Left again. And then we have uh, smooth up soft and hard. And this is going to smooth the harmonics by adding a small or large amount. It's basically used uh, to avoid clicks within your waveform. And then you also have that uh, attenuate the Gibbs phenomenon and rem remove the Gibbs phenomenon. And it's that technique that it basically attenuates where low ringing oscillators change at different types of fast volume changes, something kind of similar, similar like that. I'm sure there's better videos that'll explain that more than I can, but rest assured those options are there. Here you can reset the phase, which you guess it will reset it. And then the randomized phase will randomize the phase of your harmonics. Then here uh, you can add different types of harmonics. So like, uh, I mean, lock these different types of harmonics. So like, let's say for example, let's unlock all of these and we have a saw wave and we'll convert that. So you like this, but you want to lock all the odd harmonics. So then let's just remove some of these and leave those rest alone. So now it's kind of like a squarish type of saw, kind of like a hybrid uh, waveform. So it's kind of a cool little tool to work with. And you can also like lock the odd, the even, the inactive ones, and then also invert them as well. So something kind of cool like that to think about. So uh, also what's actually kind of really cool. So if you want to keep this type of harmonics that you've worked on for a while, like let's go back to assign, convert that. So let's say you have this, you have this, this wave you've been working on and you, and you really like it and you have all your settings dialed and you've kind of been kind of nit gritty with it and really picky and you, you're finally happy with it. So you can click this here and then you can copy this information and then go to operator two and then you can paste that exact same information by hitting uh, paste and then replace. So it's kind of cool because a lot of the times when you're designing a waveform, you're going to be, be picky and okay, maybe, Oh, that's too much of that harmonic. Let's string this down. What about if I change that phase? And you finally dial something in and you don't want to recreate all of that by hand again. So it's a very handy tool if you use that copy and paste. So let's reset this here back to a sine wave. And I'd recommend to really, like I said earlier, check out different types of patches and kind of see how they've made stuff and see which harmonics are picked and why they're picked. Because essentially, like I was saying with the organ, it's all the different octaves going up and down. And then also for this organ, for example, we we think, okay, we have the basic tone, but we also want maybe a vibrato for it, or maybe we want to uh, automate or articulate the EQ so you can have a little bit more frequencies come in and go in. So it kind of simulates that pumping, that rotary type of sound. So basically the point of this video is to really make sure to dial in and get your first initial waveform right if you are if you do like additive synthesis. And then once you get something that you really like to work with, then start adding the stuff later, EQ and filters and effects and all that crazy stuff because then it'll really bring it to life. So hopefully you guys are starting to understand this harmonic editor. It can be a little intimidating at first, but once it's kind of a little bit demystified, it becomes really cool and the possibilities become endless and you'll eventually lo lose your entire life into the synth because it's a, it's a time sink, that's for sure. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next video, which should be coming very soon. And we're going to be diving into the envelope editor. So... We're going to be diving into like the envelopes, the LFO, the key mapping, velocity mapping, and mod XY, random, unison, all that cool stuff there. So hope to see you in the next video, and thank you very much for watching.